Howdy! Welcome to Internet Roundup. That's Josh, I'm Chuck. We do the Stuff You Should Know podcast normally. Yeah. Our more intelligent uh, sister cast. No? No. The main thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you're on a Delta flight right now, welcome. Yeah. Sit back, relax, take your shoes off. Put your seatbelt on, though. I mean, there's no reason to not have it on. Take off your socks, roll them around at your <laughs> right. neighbor. Pick your nose. Yeah, do all those things that like are this? fun to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have two stories here. What we do each week is get a couple of stories off the internet, and we talk about them. Sometimes we make fun of them, and that's what we're going to do in this case. Sometimes they're serious. <laughs> when? We're supposed to be serious? Occasionally. I didn't know But uh, this one, we like to kind of poke fun at, at studies sometimes, frivolous studies. Sure. And I think this falls under that category, don't you think? Uh, I think that this study was published in the hopes of getting an Ig Nobel Prize. Oh. An Ig Nobel Prize. So people are trying to get those now. This one stinks of that to me. Yeah? We'll find out. You want to explain what an Ig Nobel Prize is real quick? The Ig Nobels are from uh, Harvard, I think. Maybe. And basically, it's it was from the, uh, I think it started in the 70s, 80s, something like that, where the, these group of researchers got together and handed out awards for, like, basically the dumbest, the most obvious, the worst right. studies, or even just the weirdest. Sort of like, like the, the Razzies yes. of the uh, intellectual world. Right. Do you want to explain what the Razzies are? Yeah, the Razzies <laughs> are when they give out bad uh, awards for bad movies. Right. And a movie <laughs> is a motion picture you that you sit and watch. Yeah. Well, you want to explain what a picture is? A picture is uh, <laughs> it's a, a captured bit of reality or imagination placed in a box. Now we're kind of doing a bit from the movie Airplane, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Don't call me movies. All right. So this study was out of uh, Switzerland. and um, <clears throat> Shout out Switzerland. Yep. A lead researcher, Matthias. Uh, Lichty of the <laughs> University Hospital in Basel, Basel, Switzerland. And what they did was they studied... Basel, Basel, it's like Baden, Baden. <laughs> they uh, they studied beer and its effects on people. And they found out it makes you happier. Happier and more um, open to sexually explicit materials. Imagine but that. not necessarily more randy. Right. That was a, a a finding that I think was important. Sure. Uh, what they did was they took 30 men and 30 women, gave some of them real beer and some of them near beer. And um, the funny thing is the near beer people still pretended they were drunk. Probably so. Uh, and they had them perform different tasks like facial recognition and empathy uh, and sexual arousal tests. <laughs> right. And they found that you were more empathetic Um potentially more sexually aroused and happier and more eager to socialize after a drink or two. Okay, so the men Imagine may have that. been more socially, right. That's why this is going to get the Ig Nobels because yeah. it's just- So obvious. Yes. It confirms something that everybody already knew. He even says that in here. Yeah. This confirms the long-held suspicion that a drink or two makes you more sociable. <laughs> right. That it's a social lubricant. Yeah. I think that um, I think that this study was carried out because the researcher was like, one for you, one for me. Oh, is that it? One for you, <laughs> two for me. Mm-hmm. And then he gets out the nudie mags. <laughs> Check these out. Yeah. You like gent? That's pretty much what happened. Uh, and they <laughs> said they that women in particular were more apt to look at uh, sexually explicit images after a drink or two, but it did not uh, arouse them sexually apparently right. as much. Yeah. They were just more open to be like. Yeah. I wonder what kind of money they spent on this and that's, how they could have allocated that. That's why it's a despicable study. You know? Everything else is kind of jokey or whatever, but it ate up funding Yeah, that could have gone to a, a, a study that actually did further human understanding of the world. Yeah, agreed. And it was actually published in September of uh, this year in Psychopharmacology <clears throat> Magazine. Shame, shame, shame. What does this even mean? We need to do one on that. Yeah, like where that came from? Yeah. Like shame, shame. I'm flicking my wart onto you. I haven't seen anyone do that since like 1983. Mm-hmm. I totally forgot about that. I'm going to bring I'm that back. I'm the first person to do it since 1983. Yeah, bring it back. I just did. Like in the store or or pull up to someone on their cell phone on the highway and just go, 
Right. And they'll be like, is he making it rain like little <laughs> little dollars? <laughs> so awesome. Finger dollars. <laughs> All right, uh, what's your story, Josh? Oh, yeah, we hadn't done the second one. My story, I believe, is about the potentially the world's oldest person. Yeah. Um, so, as everybody knows, there's always this huge struggle to determine who the world's oldest person is. Yeah. And Guinness gets involved, um, and they usually are the the de facto authority on saying this is the world's oldest person. Right. And Guinness, um, not the beer, the records, they have um, they have a, a a process, a protocol, sure, to where the person's actual age has to be verified by a neutral third party. That um, is not just like the local authorities. Yeah. Right. So in doing that, they have determined that right now the oldest person in the world is a uh, a woman named Emma Morano who lives in Italy. She's 116 years old, verified. 116 years old. That's super old, right? Yeah. Turns out there's a lot of other people out there who say, "Oh, I'm way older than 116," including a man. Who lives in Indonesia, and his name is uh, Maba Gotho. Great name. Yeah. How old does he say he is, Chuck? He says he's 145 years old, <laughs> and he's from Central Java, Indonesia. Mm-hmm. And um, the reason he's making the news now is because he says he I'm ready to go. Right. And he's um, like attention world. I'm yeah. ready to die. Yeah. Which uh, it should be his right, I believe. It's everybody's right. I don't know what the laws are in Indonesia. But here in America, they make it pretty tough to uh, to to go when you want to go, unless you're in Oregon, and oh, I really? think California now too. Yeah, California, I think passed. Oh yeah, since, since like the '90s, I think for Oregon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, California recently passed that. Everybody just goes to Switzerland, oh, or really? Canada now. I think allows that. Interesting. Yeah, I've always thought it. I don't know. It just doesn't seem quite right that the government says like no, no, no you can't. You stay alive. Yeah, you know? It, it, it's a little unusual when you step back and look at it. Well, and it forces people to do, to do things on their own in ghastly ways that are mm-hmm. terrible for their family. Well, that's the argument you in know? favor of uh, a legalized assisted suicide yeah. or rights, right to die. Totally. Wow, we really just traipsed into one of the most controversial topics yep. on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Enjoy your uh, your snacks if you're on a Delta like, flight right now. <laughs> But um, he said he wants to die. Uh, in in fact, in 1992, when he was 122 mm-hmm. years old, mm-hmm. he went ahead and purchased his gravestone uh, near all of his children that he's outlived, and his four siblings that he's outlived, and his ten wives that he's outlived. And he thought he was going to go back then, in the, like the height of the grunge movement, right? When he was 122, he's like, it's not actually deep. <laughs> it's pretty amazing, but. There are uh, other people. There's a Nigerian man that says that he is 171, and there's a woman in Ethiopia that says she's 163. <clears throat> right. And I think in some of these countries, it's tough to find those like really accurate records from the mid to late 1800s. Right. So that they can't verify them. Right. You wanna you wanna make sure, especially these days, if you intend to uh, live to be a very old age. Yeah. Make sure you got your documentation in order from a young age when you can put your hands on it still. How old do you want to be? I I don't know. I don't know. I certainly don't want to get to the point where I'm like, I want to die. (laughs) You know? That does not sound fun to just sit around and be like, is today the day? (laughs) You know? Uh, You got it down, though. Oh, thank you. You're ready. Thanks. I've never thought about... uh, I mean, as they advance, the quality of life gets better and better. Well, that's the thing. That's why I'm I'm reticent to be like, I want to die at right. 100 and have them come for me at 100 and be like, here, we have video documentation of you saying this. Yeah. So your now, answer not is, only do you have a right to die, <laughs> right. you have an obligation to die. Right. So your answer is, don't, that, don't ask me that now. Yeah. Okay. Because you're right. I mean, medicine will almost certainly advance yeah. to the point where we're going to be like, yeah, 100 nothing. I'm still playing tennis. Right. You play tennis? When I can. I love tennis. Yeah, me too. It's the best. Uh, we should play tennis. I didn't know you liked tennis. I do. I used to love to play tennis. Oh, we should play tennis. And for someone who never played tennis, like, for real, I uh-huh. wasn't too bad. Same here. Not much of a serve, but I can hit it around pretty well, good. Well, the serve's the hardest part. Yeah. Yeah. But who, who needs serving, right? It's not a big part of the game. Yeah. 
That's it for Internet Roundup this week. We'll see you next week.